Hello and welcome. In today's video, I'm finally going to show you how to make one of these. Yeah, I know, this one's been a long time coming. The Parkside Performance 20 volt A1 impact driver hasn't been in production for a couple of years now, but I still get messages asking me how to modify it with a combination anvil, which probably just goes to show you how tough these old Parkside tools really are. Luckily, a friend of mine sent me theirs because they wanted it converted to a half inch handle. So now I can finally walk you through the entire process. But a fair warning, unlike the newer models, this one needs quite a few custom parts, so it's not exactly an easy job. I've done plenty of questionable things on this channel, and every now and then when I watch the footage back, I realize just how risky some of them were. I've also repaired my fair share of broken tools, and all of that could have been made much easier if I'd known about today's sponsor, JLC CNC. They can make pretty much anything from CNC machine parts to custom 3D prints and ship them straight to your door. But more on them a bit later in this video. Alright then, let's get back to the task at hand. And the first thing we need to do is to disassemble the impact driver. And my advice here is to start by removing the quarter inch collet. It's much easier to do when the whole tool is still in one piece. Just grab a small flathead screwdriver and pop off the retaining ring. Once that's off, the rest of the parts will come out pretty easily. Make sure to keep everything together though, because you'll need those parts just in case you ever decide to turn it back into an impact driver. In need of custom parts, with JLC CNC, getting them is easier than ever. Just upload your 3D design to their platform and get an instant online quote which updates in real time as you pick materials, finishes and specs. From there, their in-house production team takes over, using cutting edge CNC technology to bring your designs to life. Whether it's precision milling, detailed turning or expert post-processing. And when it's done, they ship directly to your door, anywhere in the world. Fast, reliable and ready to use. Now that the collar has been removed, the next step is to open it all up and take out the old anvil, washer and bushing. Unfortunately, Parkside doesn't make these anymore, which is a real shame because these were probably some of their most reliable impact drivers ever. Also, don't forget to remove this small plastic piece at the back because it holds the two halves of the shell together. And there you have it. I know it looks a bit bulky and heavy by today's standards, but this thing was seriously over-engineered. Both the mechanical parts and the electronics are incredibly tough. Considering what it cost back in the day, it was an absolute bargain. Now that we've got the front casing off, we can easily remove the old anvil and washer. The original bushing though, well, that takes a bit more effort. It's pressed into the casing, so you'll need a bit of force to get it out. You could use a vise or some kind of press if you have it, but I found that a bearing puller and a socket can do the trick just fine. Probably not the most textbook method, but hey, if it works, it works. And here it is, the original bushing, with a height of 40 millimeters, an outside diameter of 90 millimeters, and well, that's it, because we don't really care about the inside diameter, do we? Now, unfortunately, a bushing that size doesn't really exist in the wild. So this isn't exactly a plug and play job. And because of that, I had to go and get one custom made to fit both the casing and the new anvil. There are a few options out there that come close in size, but they still need to be machined in order to fit properly. As always, I've dropped links to those in the description below. All right then, let's start the assembly by installing the new bushing. If you have an extractor and your new bushing matches the original bushing exactly, you can usually press it in with just that. However, if the size isn't exact, you'll need a bit more care and patience. Or you could just use a vise or a press and force it in. But be very careful not to deform the casing while you're doing that. Next up, we need to find an anvil that matches the size and shape of the original, which is actually easier said than done. On one hand, you've got the half inch anvil from a Makita DTW190, which fits almost perfectly, but it's just a bit too short for comfort. So you can't really use it without modifying the casing. On the other hand, there's this, a half inch and quarter inch combination anvil 
And that one fits almost perfectly, but the only issue here is the base, which is a bit too thick, so you need it machined before it fits properly. And as you'd expect, there's one final issue to deal with, and that's the new washer you'll need in order to get everything assembled properly. I did warn you this wasn't going to be an easy job, didn't I? What you'll need is a washer that's about 2mm thick, with an outside diameter of about 28mm, and an inside diameter that matches your new angle. And just like before, that exact size doesn't really exist off the shelf. So you'll either need to have one made or rework an existing washer to fit. Once again, I've added a link to a possible option down in the video description. And once you have everything ready to be assembled again, and you're sure that all the parts fit together perfectly, don't forget to apply some grease before putting the screws back in place. Always and at every step, make sure that everything moves smoothly and without too much resistance. A slight gap between the hammer and the anvil is also completely normal, as long as it isn't anything over a millimetre. Some of the screws are different shapes and sizes, so make sure you remember where each one goes, especially the ones holding the front casing in place because those are the most different from the rest. Then, a couple of finishing touches later, and there you have it, your very own Parkside Performance Impact King. An extremely robust tool which works with both half inch sockets and quarter inch bits. And when using quarter inch bits, you won't notice any increase, or for that matter, drop in performance, because it's basically the same setup as before. But where this tool shines, is with a half inch socket. So let's see how much power it delivers when there's no adapter in the way to take some of its power away. In previous videos I've already shown you that this thing has absolutely no trouble removing wheel bolts, even ones tightened to 150 newton meters which is above spec for most regular cars. But now let's take it up a notch and see how it handles these M18 lug nuts. I'll set them up to 200 250 and 300 newton meters and we'll see how it performs. And remember, in its original form, this 5 year old tool is rated at 226 newton meters. But like I keep saying, this thing is an absolute beast. So here we go, a fully charged ordinary 4 amp battery and 3 lug bolts set to 200, 250 and 300 newton meters. So let's see how it does. Wow, even at 300 newton meters, it didn't break a sweat. Now, let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like. And for more videos like this, please consider subscribing to the channel.